Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, we're going to be doing a little bit of technical analysis on Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency markets, and more specifically, we're going to be zooming into the hourly chart and talking about a little chart formation that's shown up here on Bitcoin. Because if we draw a downtrend right there and we draw an uptrend right there, then what we see is that Bitcoin currently finds itself in what is known as a bearish pennant. And a bearish pennant isn't called a bearish pennant for just any old reason. It's called a bearish pennant because it's a pennant that, if you can believe this, is bearish. And the reason it's bearish is because this is what is known as a continuation pattern. And of course, it's a bear pennant because Bitcoin was moving in the bearish direction when it entered the pennant. And what does all that mean? That typically means that Bitcoin is going to be breaking bearish out of this. More often than not, Bitcoin will break bearish out of a bear pennant. Again, if you can believe that. But we really don't want that to happen because, of course, Many of us are probably already happy with where Bitcoin is. We're already happy to be buying in at these levels. We might not want Bitcoin to go lower, but the technicals are telling us a couple of different things, actually, because this chart formation is telling us that we're going to be going lower in contradiction to the daily RSI. As you can see, daily RSI is sitting down here around 15, the lowest it's been in a very long time indicating that we're probably about to see some kind of bounce. So which one of these technical indicators do we listen to? Well, we're going to be discussing that in today's video and trying to get to the bottom of where Bitcoin is going to be going over the next 24 to 48 hours or so. We're also going to be talking about market sentiment because I want to show you guys some stuff on the Bitcoin shorts charts and the Bitcoin longs chart. As you can see, when Bitcoin jumped off its little proverbial cliff, we saw Bitcoin shorts jumped as well, but they jumped in the, in the northerly direction, but now they're coming back down, which is interesting. Another interesting thing is that the Bitcoin long are continuing to rise. So that tells us a lot about the sentiment of the market. The Bitcoin shorts chart and the Bitcoin longs chart do. So we're going to be discussing all of that in more in today's video. So without much further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. I believe that was the longest intro I've ever done for the introduction to a video. So I hope you feel special that today's video has set a record. Anyway, Bitcoin is currently trading around $5,500 on Coinbase. And we jump over to CoinMarketCap to do the crypto market recap. We can see across all exchanges, Bitcoin is trading at right around that level of 5555 on the <clears throat> uh, today I should say Bitcoin's daily volume is hovering around 4.6 billion dollars and it's down by about 1.06 percent over the last 24 hours nothing really to write home about guys of course in recent memory we've seen larger falls than that on Bitcoin as you can see here on the seven day price graphs and on the trading view graphs nothing really to write home about but one thing I do want to talk about is XRP because as you can see XRP has taken the spot for of number two and put Ethereum in number three I could I, I I managed it I managed to get a rhyme in there anyway XRP XRP has usurped Ethereum with about about a 1.2, 1.3 billion dollar uh, lead in market capitalization here. XRP, I believe in 2016 and before that, was the number two cryptocurrency before um, and was always there uh, until Ethereum came up and took it over. So it looks like um, XRP is kind of taking back its throne from Ethereum that it had lost for about two years or so. It's definitely been a very long time since we've seen this order. We have seen, uh, uh, excuse me, XRP come up and usurp Ethereum several times in recent memory, but never with this much of a lead, I don't think. And one of the reasons for that is because the altcoin actually seem to be faring pretty well here while Bitcoin does this little cliff dive. Of course, Bitcoin Cash hasn't, but that's neither here nor there. That's a, that's a whole fiasco that, as you can probably tell, I've been avoiding on the channel. But the reason that I think XRP is doing so well is, if, as far as market capitalization is concerned is because XRP has actually fared pretty well in this little pullback here. If we come over to its chart, as you can see, XRP is just continuing to go up against the Bitco against Bitcoin and against the US dollar. I don't know where it went. Why is XRP over US dollar isn't on my list anymore? XRP over US dollar has continued to do rather not well, but it hasn't done as poorly as some of the other cryptocurrencies have, and it certainly hasn't done as poorly as Bitcoin has. It's still holding up here above the all-important support level of 45 cents. So it looks like XRP might be staying in the number two spot for a little while. I know you, a lot of you guys are big XRP fans, so maybe you have a even more of a reason to be now. Anyway, I'm not going to get into the politics of why that has happened. There are some things going on that I'm not going to be discussing about, um, about, um, uh, coin amounts, but we're not going to talk about that right now, guys. Anyway, Factum, in fact, is the number one gainer today, up by about 15%, but the rest of the market is not doing as well. We see that there is some green here, but most uh, most of the market is not doing as well. If we scroll down here, we're going to see most of the market is red. NASDAQ coin is another outlier, again, down by 15%. Two videos ago, actually, if you go back on the channel, it's the most recent video because it was a re-upload. Long story, NASDAQ coin two or three days ago was up 300%, so it's kind of funny to see that it is now at the bottom of this list instead of at the top up here where it was, in fact, up here. Anyway, enough with the puns. Let's go ahead and get back on into the technical analysis. I do want to talk about this bear pennant because it is rather important that we have an understanding of where Bitcoin goes from here because we've just seen Bitcoin make one of the most important technical moves of the entire year. Bitcoin breaking $6,000 is an extraordinarily important 
move. I cannot overstate how important it is that Bitcoin broke $6,000. This is going to have massive and far-reaching ramifications on the Bitcoin market for a very long time. So what happens in the next couple of weeks following this $6,000 break is going to be very, very important. <clears throat> And this bear pennant right here seems to be the first piece of technical analysis that we can really start doing as far as chart formations are concerned after we've broken through $6,000. As you can see, it happened very quickly, and we haven't had a whole lot of interesting stuff happen since then, but we do have this bear pennant to look at. And like I said earlier on in the video, bear pennants more often than not do break bearish because they are bear pennants. They are continuation patterns. And one of the ways that you measure how far uh, the market's likely to break and one of the ways that you put what's known as a price target on it is by measuring like this. You measure from the top of the little trend that moved into it. I'm going to put it right about there to the bottom of the bear pennant. And then you would use this as a price target from here. Now, the reason that I don't really like doing this, I'm just showing you how to do it. I don't really like doing that is because what it normally gives you, this normally gives you some kind of crazy uh, prediction about how far the market's going to move. Sometimes it'll give you a prediction that's very accurate. Sometimes it won't. But I find a lot of times price targets on pennants are not the best way of determining where the market's going to go. That's not typically how I like to do my technical analysis. I did want to show you that, guys, because you will see a lot of people that use pen, uh, price targets like this. And they're perfectly valid. They're just t they just don't tend to be as powerful as I like them to be. And based on that, I do want to go ahead and run under the assumption here for a second that Bitcoin is going to break bearish out of this. Now, I'm not going to say with any certainty which direction this is going to break. We're just going to run under the assumption it's going to break bearish because the overall sentiment of the market is already bearish. And this is, in fact, a bear pennant, which you would normally expect to break bearish. If we were to break bearish here, where I'm expecting Bitcoin to go is to $5,000. I've said for a very long time, you guys can go back on the channel and look at that and fact check me here. I've talked about several times that if Bitcoin breaks $6,000 within the first couple of days, it's going to be trading at or very close to uh, at or very close to $5,000 because there's not going to be a whole lot of support in here. And that's exactly what we saw happen. We saw Bitcoin come down to around $5,200. We did get some support right before $5,000, but there wasn't a lot holding us up right here. If you watched the last video that went up on the channel, the re-uploaded video, you'll see that I was talking about one of the reasons I believe that this really got crazy is because there were a couple of whales that dumped a bunch of Bitcoin. Now, of course, there were different arguments that you can make about why Bitcoin went below here, but a big reason was because of thin order books and because of a lot of people dumping a ton of Bitcoin. I mean, that's how markets move in, in, in uh, reality anyway. And that's one of the things that we had to look out for is Bitcoin moving very quickly if we broke $6,000. And now that we have broken $6,000, I do expect we're probably going to go down to a big, even mass psychological level of support like $5,000. That would be a good place for, in my opinion, to try and reestablish the floor that we previously had at $6,000. I would love to see the floor that we had at $6,000 be reestablished just $1,000 lower at $5,000 because $5,000 is also a very powerful level of support from a technical standpoint. It's not just some random level. It was a previous all-time high, unlike $6,000. $5,000 was one, a previous all-time high, and also $5,000 is half of the way to $10,000. So it's an even more important big even than $6,000 is. I'd like to see Bitcoin go down there, actually. I wouldn't, ha I wouldn't have a problem with that because if Bitcoin continues going south like this and we try to get some kind of little rally coming out of here and we start trying to go back bullish and we're not ready for it, the bears are going to crush the bulls and push us even lower than we already had. So let's go ahead and let all the steam of the bears get pushed out. Let them push us all the way down to $5,000 and then we'll try and establish that as a level of support. Now, there is one thing I want to talk about with that, and that has to do with RSI, like I mentioned earlier, because we do see this bear pennant indicating that we may be about to go lower, and the price target I'd be looking at is probably, based on how strong the bulls and the bears are, based on a lot of things I'm not getting into here in today's video, I'd put the price target somewhere around $5,000, mainly because of how, I'm, uh, how strong that is, and also talking about the strength of the bulls and the bears. But... One thing we also have to keep in mind is the RSI. As you can see, our, uh, daily RSI is sitting down here around 17. That is an extremely low level for RSI, and in fact, it's so low that we have to go on the Coinbase, or excuse me, on the Bitfinex chart to find the last time that RSI was this low on Bitcoin because the Coinbase chart isn't old enough. If we come here on Bitfinex, daily RSI is only about 20 or so. But if we come back here in time, we're not going to see that happen again for a very long time. Come back here and look with me. The last time we saw Bitcoin RSI go this low was in 2015 at the analogous time in the in the Bitcoin bear market that a lot of people are saying we're at right now. A lot of people are saying that the move we just saw is analogous to this move right here where we fell below the established level of support. A lot of people are saying this is where we are in relation to the 2013, excuse me, 2014 uh, bear market in 2015 accumulation phase. A lot of people are saying that. And not with un, not with an invalid reason, by the way. There is a good reason to say that. There are a lot of correlations here. But we have to go a very far, a uh, very long way back to see RSI go this far, go this low. And since it's so low, you normally see an indication that the RSI is going to bounce from here. Now, 
with that in mind, one thing you have to keep in mind about oscillators like RSI is that a lot of times they can get overextended and that's perfectly okay. That They will oftentimes give you false signals because whenever RSI gets above 70 or below 30, you're supposed to be expecting a reversal sometimes, but sometimes it doesn't come as quickly as you would like. If we look over here in December of 2017, we find a great example of that. RSI over here, when Bitcoin hadn't even hit all-time high yet, it was sitting at about 17,000 instead. RSI came all the way up to 93. All the way up to 93, guys. On a with a, if we were to flip that analogy over 50 as the as the uh, mirror point, that would see RSI going all the way down to seven. So we can see RSI get really, really overextended before we see some kind of reversal. My point with RSI is that we're going to see some kind of bounce coming in the next week or so, especially if Bitcoin does come down to $5,000. We're going to see something. We simply have to because RSI isn't ever going to go to zero. That's just not really how the oscillator even works, guys. We're going to see something, but it may take some time. I could very easily see Bitcoin going down to $5,000 right now. I'm not calling for Bitcoin to go down to $5,000. I'm just presenting what seems to be most likely based on the technicals right now. Anyway, with that out of the way, I do want to talk about the sentiment in the market as well because that ties back into what we've just been discussing. And that does become even more apparent when you look at the Bitcoin shorts chart. You can almost look at the Bitcoin shorts chart and the Bitcoin longs chart as a gauge of the bullishness and the bearishness in the market. You can almost look at this as this chart being the levels of bearishness in the market and the longs chart being the levels of bullishness in the market. And right now, we're seeing longs generally go up even after we broke the most important support level in all of Bitcoin technical analysis of $6,000. Guys, I know I'm saying that. It sounds like I'm it sounds like I'm being hyperbolic when I talk about $6,000. I'm not in any stretch of the imagination. $6,000 was incredibly important. That turns all of the technical analysis that we've done on its head and probably extends the bear market by three to six months at least. And it's a very important thing that we broke that. And it's also very interesting and important to see the Bitcoin longs rising after this. Normally, you would expect that the longs might not be rising after this. You might expect them to be falling. You might expect the bullish sentiment to be leaving the market and the bearish to be taking over. But it seems we're seeing a little bit of resistance to this move below $6,000 because we're seeing the longs continue to rise and we're seeing the shorts continue to drop. Now, maybe there's just a lot of people in the market that realize that $6,000 being broken was not really a valid thing to be broken. It wasn't, uh, we, Bitcoin just wasn't ready to break $6,000, even though we did. It, Bitcoin isn't worth anything less than $6,000. Maybe a lot of people in the shorts and the longs charts realize that. A lot of the people that are shorting and longing right now understand that. Perhaps that's what it is. But it seems to me that a lot of the people in the market realize that, that that's exactly the case, that Bitcoin doesn't belong down here and that Bitcoin should not be below $6,000, that Bitcoin fundamentally isn't worth this, that the fundamentals are looking very good, and that up until a week ago, the, fund, the technicals were looking quite good as well. It seems to me that the market sentiment is a lot more bullish than perhaps it would have been at the analogous time back over here in 2014 and 15. Because a lot of t a lot of people over here, back, o back over here, were very, very bearish, guys. I wasn't in the market at this time, but I can tell you based on what the chart looks like, a lot of people were extremely bearish back over here because there was a lot of news and a lot of fundamental reasons to be bearish. We had a lot of problems with this market. There was a lot of fundamental reasons why this bear market happened rather than mainly just technical like ours, uh, like the 2018 bear market happened for. There were a lot of reasons why this happened. And a lot of them aren't present here. I think a lot of people realize that even though we're following the same trend that happened here in 2014 and 15, that we don't really have a good fundamental reason to because we are not worth less than $6,000 based on the fundamentals. Tell me in the comments section down below what you think of that. I know a lot of people are going to say that the fundamentals don't matter, the news doesn't matter, all that stuff doesn't matter. Well, I completely disagree with you. I think the fundamentals do matter. I think the news does matter. I think the adoption does matter. I think the retail interest does matter. I think the institutional invest uh, institutional interest does matter. I think all of those things do matter. Of course, I'm a technical analyst, and I do think the technicals are very important, especially on the shorter-term time frames when news is less relevant. But on the longer-term time frames, the fundamentals tend to have this, this gravitational attraction on the market. If the fundamental value of Bitcoin is up here, it's going to slowly, very, very weakly attract Bitcoin back up towards it. It's kind of like, it, well, I use the word gravitational attraction, but I mean it. Gravity is one of the, I, I used to want to go into astrophysics, guys, so I'm going to go on a little bit of an astrophysical tangent here. Gravity is one of the weakest forces in the entire universe, but it's also one of the strongest because it has the ability to pull things to it from a very, very long way away. So even if the fundamental underlying intrinsic value of Bitcoin is way up here, it's going to have this slow 
weak little attraction that over time will compound on itself and pull Bitcoin back up towards it. If Bitcoin's fundamental value were down here at 100, it would be slowly, weakly, but gradually over time pulling Bitcoin down towards it because that's the way gravitational attraction works. And that's the way that fundamental value of the market seems to work also. It seems to gradually pull you there. It's, an, it's a very hard force to understand. It's a very hard force to see, I should say, but it is there and you do have to take it into account when you're doing your technical analysis if you want to be as pro as uh, accurate with your TA as you possibly can. Anyway, guys, what I'm trying to say is that I think the fundamentals look very good. Even though we've gone below $6,000, I am a lot more bearish now than I was a week ago, of course, but that doesn't mean that Bitcoin's going anywhere. That doesn't mean that Bitcoin's dead. That doesn't mean that the market is over. It doesn't mean that Bitcoin is going to stay below $6,000 forever. It just extends the bear market a little while, guys. Patience is a virtue. Remember that because as a lot of people have said before, uh, markets are uh, just a tool to, to transfer wealth from the inpatient to the patient. So make sure you're on the right side of that little uh, war between the patient and the inpatient. Anyway, guys, like I said, tell me in the comments section down below where you think Bitcoin's going to be going over the next couple of days. Do you think it's going to go down to $5,000 like I have a feeling it will? Do you think the RSI is going to go down below 10 like we saw the inverse happen over here? at the climax of the bull market, perhaps now at the climax of the bear market. I'm interested, as always, to hear your opinions in the comments section down below. If you want to join the Discord server and have the conversation with me, continue over there and with the lovely people in the Discord server. I would love to see your lovely face over there, so go ahead and join with the link in the description down below. That is going to do it for this video, guys, though. I do want to thank each and every single one of you for watching, as always, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace!